Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Drinks Blue. I am joined by Tersman tonight. Tersman, how are you doing, my dog? I'm doing great. I just had a nice lunch and uh, I'm looking forward to watching some uh, fantastic sportsmanship. Yes, indeed. And what do we have in store for our viewers tonight, Tersman? Well, tonight we got a uh, race between One Free Fits and Magre from the uh, round one of this month's Chupon Championship, which is a uh, sort of side tournament that uh, I, my good friend Drinks Glue here uh, runs uh, every month. Uh, it's a tag team tournament, and I forget who their partners were, but this is uh, yeah, oh, well, Fitz versus Magre. Very nice transition. Let's take a look at this amazing high-quality graphic that we prepared for tonight's viewing. Yeah, yeah. These are the current standings for this month's Chupon Championship. Uh, right now, you can see Terzman, or excuse me, uh, Magre's tag team partners, Double Down 11, who previously ran his seed. The way the Chupon Championship works, by the way, is you have a tag team partner, and your team's time is the cumulative time between you and your partners. So right now, Double Down 11, Magre's partner, has posted a 119.19. And one free fits his partner, who is, um, oh, gosh, oh my gosh, Honeydew, of course. Uh, Honeydew honey do. has that 120.07, so it's highly contested between these two teams. And so, again, this is the podcast of Magre and one free fits. This is not a live viewing, by the way. But let us switch on over to their head-to-head -head screen. So, Chupon Championship, cumulative times between the two teams, so... Double down, 11, Magre's partner, and Honeydew, uh, one free fits his partner. Uh, I've already submitted their times, uh, so hotly contested between these two teams, and uh, so, it, so, so it should be a good one. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, these are two two good players. They've both been around for a long time. They've got uh, years of strategy under their belt, um, and it'll. I'm, I'm excited to see how uh, how they both tackle this one. Yeah, some upper up, upper echelon players here tonight. Um, so with Absolutely. that with that said, let's get underway. Sounds good. Yeah, and we gave our runners the go, but past tense. You know, we went back in time and told them to start now. All right. Yeah, it's very very polite of them to uh, deal with the the time distortion that we've got going on here. Yeah, I, I, with, I know this is a well team like that. I'll do whatever. Yeah, we borrowed the epic from Jets of Time for this podcast, uh, but, but ignore the fine details. The fine details don't matter. We got Magre. We got one prefits. It should be a good one. All right. Yeah, looking like Magre is going straight for the sealed gate. This is this is a. I feel like this is the way to go if you have Terra at the start. Like I I always regret not remembering to go here, you know, at second one. My big problem, I, I've been doing the past couple of terror starts I had, it, as I forget, this exists. So I'm like, oh yeah, I, I have Terra, I have Cyan, I have Yamara, or whatever. Let me go to Nars like I always do, or let me go to right. uh, South Figaro, let me go to one of the other spots, and I entirely forget to come here. Um, but nevertheless, if you have Terra, this is a fantastic place to come, because it's so treasure dense, the most treasure dense area in the game. And our runners are going about shopping a little bit. You'll see a lot of chest opening in some high dense chest areas, such as the Returner's Cave such as South Figaro, such as Narch is where uh, Fitz went a little bit here. Uh, because we need to get some equipment under our belt so we can start killing things. What are you looking for in the opening, Turdsman? Um, I'm looking for a, a big old weapon uh, for somebody to swing around. That's uh, what end up, usually ends up blinding me when I have a Terra start is I don't think about the sealed gate as much as I think about, like, oh, I have someone who is guaranteed to be able to use, what, I think four out of the six like best weapons in the game. Yeah. So I usually want to find one of those. I don't mind finding fixed dice, as it looks like Fitz found in the shed uh, over there, which, ironically enough, I was talking a big game about it, but it looked like the Nar shed was a much better treasure spot than the uh, the Imperial Armory. Yeah, fortunately, Zetzer is the only default wearer of the fixed dice, and he happens to be in the party, so that's a great pickup for Fitz. Uh, Magre has found a bunch of armor so far in the, the seal gate. Ooh, and a snow muffler. Ooh, he found hey. a bunch of armor and then some. Yeah, either or, like, I, I I, want to make sure I can do at least, a, you know, 1,000, 2,000 damage uh, as as soon as possible, yeah. either at level 3 or just after, you know, one grind fight. Ooh, finding an offering is not too bad either. Oh, offering even better with that fixed ice in tow. Beautiful. I guess I also like to spend... I, I try to go to towns... Uh, 
that have really easy access to shops. Like, I, I like South Figaro. There's a lot of chests there. There's a lot to do. Um, the basement is good for both picking up a grind fight or two or to, you know, get some more items down there. Uh, control lock. But um, the part that kind of bums me out is if there's something at the shops there, let's say there's something really good in the item shop or the weapon and armor shop, it's kind of a bit of a walk to get back there later if you don't have the money off on hand. Yeah. Um, so looks like Fitz is, or excuse me, Fitz is going to make his way down to the Imperial basement. Uh, if you're Mog right here, we didn't find much down there. We did find a bunch of armor. Uh, where would you go next? Looks like he's picking all work, but where would you go, Turdsman? This is a good pick. I like this. This is a really, you know, it's a nice little corridor. Uh, you go down one way and you come back the other. Um, it's got a couple of extra little little boxes that you can grab. And yeah, I think if, if I'm Magre at this point, I'm, I'm wanting to find some weapons. Mm, uh, I'm wanting to check the weapon shops. Since they, they found lock, they didn't find an Esper. They, they don't quite have access to a bunch of offense just yet. Yeah, I, I so think the only, unless yeah. you're desperate, I really like coming to Albrook after Sealgate just because it's so convenient. And then you yeah. can, you know, kind of cut out if you, if you want to pick out Nars. Well, you, with a terrorist, you probably go on Nars anyways, but you can cut out one of the South Figaro's or maybe you cut out Returner's High. You can cut out a little bit of your loot just because it's so convenient and uh, you're parked right there. It's kind of like when you go out for tacos and you want ice cream. And if you're already, you know, the ice cream place is right across the street, you know, you just go across the street and get your ice cream. Yeah, exactly. Get yeah. some ice cream. The other thing with the terrorist start, um, saving uh, you know Narsh or even the Returner's hideout for later, since she has a check attached to it, uh, might be kind of beneficial. Just get it all done at once. All right, here is a question for you, Turdsman. Yes. Finding Locke at the end of Sealed Gate that early, would you consider doing Phoenix Cave now that you have Locke? It's only four, three, four minutes into the seed. Mm. Would you consider? I thought you were going to ask me about the Curse Shield, but. Phoenix Cave, yeah, I might be, I might be convinced into doing that. Um, I always feel bad about, I'm quote unquote, wasting that dragon mm -hmm. uh, down in there, but uh, it is better to get that out of the way sooner rather than later. I, I, I like doing the Phoenix Cave personally when I find Locke at his starting character's track. Like, say you start with Edgar. And, like, you go to Narsh, you get seven chests, and then you go to the castle, you get your four chest, And then you find Locke right there. That's when I kind of like to pivot and do Phoenix Cave. If Locke is in your starting party, sometimes, um, it kind of depends on the checks available to you <clears> as well, in my opinion. Yeah, we got a great... I, I do like you finding him that real fast, sure. and then pivoting the Phoenix Cave, just because um, there's a good chance... Characters are typically behind your newer characters, so there's a good chance Phoenix Cave leads to another character. And the good rule of thumb of Phoenix Cave, no matter what, is that you want to do it early rather than later. Just because you have to spend so much time walking through. Uh, you pass about six or seven chests that are convenient to get. And those chests are more valuable to you uh, earlier than they are later. So if you're going to run it, it's better off to do it earlier than later. Yeah, specifically because of those chests. If you if you get in there early, you can you know, get both of those things. If you're running in there late, you're probably just you know making a beeline for uh, whatever's at the end. Mm-hmm. Looks like Magre is headed to World of Ruin Narsh first, though. Yeah. Which this is this is what this is what you do when you find Locke. Like if you if you aren't in the middle of doing something else and you find Locke, just run here. It's a really quick one. You can get to pick. Like if you don't necessarily want an Esper right away because there's an Illumina on the other so slot, you can go ahead and take that. Not for Dragonhorn though. Oh yeah. Yeah, and that would have been a tough decision if that was the Esper or maybe an Experience Egg or a Ragnarok, because we have two Ragnarok wearers, or even a Valiant Knife, but Dragon Horror, not so much. We don't have a lot of comparison yeah. in the terms of, of a Dragoon at this moment. Fitz taking a uh, grind fight with one of the soldiers at the on his way out of the gate. That's that's an interesting play. It'll kick you out right away mm -hmm. um, when you, you, you know win or lose, and... I mean, found a good one. Behemoth's not this, not a bad not a bad find. Power boosting yeah, I I like it because the nice thing about the soldier fights is they're repeatable. So if it was a really really good one, then you can you know milk it if if you will. Behemoth is a great one, um, but I probably wouldn't milk this behemoth fight. I just do one and go on about my business. Yeah, he's worth a lot of experience, but he's also got a bunch of HP. He doesn't have as much as you think. Um, the double behemoth fight's a little bit better, but also obviously a little more dangerous. 
but one, one is good enough and, and go on. But you never want to you never want to leave a Gigantos on the table if uh, if you have an opportunity to fight three or four of those guys early. I mean, even with barely any experience scaling, like four of those fights are probably going to get you up to level twenty. Uh, Nizlar in our chat. Nizlar, first off, welcome. I don't think I've ever seen you before. Uh, second off, the follow up on your question is Pearl Rod getting dropped because of the long animation and frequent holy resist absorb. There are not a lot of bosses that, well, there's first off, there's 41 bosses you'll come across um, in, in Worlds Collide. And off the top of my head, four or five of them, um, Pearl's not going to do you very good on. So that's a small percentage. Pearl the spell is generally frowned upon. Uh, it's not, it's very seldomly used unless you're really, really, you know, hard up on offense. But Pearl Rods are fantastic because they're going to essentially pierce defense and, and do the maximum amount of damage that they can. So so with that said, uh, if you had your choice of rods, you wouldn't just spam Pearl Rods. you pick the faster animation ones. But spamming one or two and, and leveraging it in high, high leverage situations is a fantastic move. So it definitely wouldn't be faded because of that animation time. Um, at this point in the game, it can almost one-shot Shatternook or some of the other bosses that uh, would give you some problems that are weak to, weak to holy. So it's definitely not going to be faded because of the long animation time. It's definitely a bummer. Like, Pearl, every time I have to cast Pearl, oh, I kind of don't, so. I wish I hadn't, uh, wish I didn't have to. But the Pearl Rods especially can, they can be huge problem solvers for... Even well into the mid game, frankly. Oh yeah, especially when you come across Doomgaze later on, because Doomgaze does have high magic defense, so your fire threes won't do as much as you thought they will. That Pearl Rod's going to do quad nines at. Oh, that's a magic power plus two Esper oh. on Realm. That's a good Odin. That's a match made in heaven. Not great spells on. I think it had Doom, oh, yeah. uh, but Fire One, which is pretty much only good for unfreezing your party members. I, I don't know. Uh, just the other day I found myself casting fire on uh, tier four, or tier 1 of Final Kefka. So, so, so you My condolences. If, if your realm by chance happens to have 130 magic power, you're, you'd be shocked at how much it can do. But... Okay, alright. <laughs> that makes that, sense. That information in this seed may be related, may not, but nevertheless. That may be a spoiler on what spells are coming, but maybe not. We don't know. Ooh, Inferno is kind of rough no matter where you are. The Capture Terror could grab a couple of uh, handy dandy little shields off of this guy. Yeah, uh, Terror does have capture, and you can steal an elemental shield from all spots of Inferno. Maybe steal some shields. Is it all three, or do the claws both have the same one? Uh, it, you can't get all three elements, but you can get th three shields of all three bots. Three spots, excuse me. Okay, yeah, that's what I meant. I thought, like, the. I know the middle the middle part's uh, thunder. I didn't know what the, the claws were. You know what? That's a good question. I should know that. Uh, I think they're both... I think maybe one is fire once. I think you can get an ice shield off of them. That might be it. Maybe Fitz will show us here. Oh, no. Ooh, Fitz is uh, a little hard up here on uh, available party members. This Fitz di fixed ice wall better do it or else uh, Delta Hit's coming out soon. Yeah, we'll see. Putting it all on the dice. Well, Delta Hit's not coming out, that's for sure. Oh, good news. Yeah, one arm down. No more Delta Hit. I think his Zetzer has the, must have the snow muffler right. on because... Uh... Yeah. I was gonna reset. All right. Yeah, that was the only character that could, could equip it. Put you yeah, on the spot. Fitz is going for it. Yeah, no risk it, no biscuit. Uh, to, and to the left, Zetzer. And to the left. Oh, no, that's not what you want to see. Up oh, fourth quarter. <laughs> Fourth quarter. That's a good reset. Yeah. That's a bummer. I think probably one more, one more fight would have had it. Definitely, because uh, short arm only had one more hits, and we won't target any more after a KO. So I think three hits on body gets it done. Yeah, I think both the offering and the dragon horn, um, they won't target something that has zero. You know, ended up with zero HP in the middle of the bar of the barrage. Unless everything on the screen is up with 0 HP, then it's uh, all fair game again. Okay. Magre going through the Leet River. Uh, it's something that we talked about earlier. It's one of Terra's checks. Uh, gotten a lot more popular with, uh, with the changes that happened a few months back, where the encounters are now set, so you know exactly how many you're going to run into based on which direction you take in the beginning. What do you think of the Leet River play here for uh, Magre? Because... Uh... 
we had some pretty good checks with Terra and, and Locke available. And then uh, we could have went to Ousers too if we wanted some free or some fixed encounters before we uh, took a boss. So we had some options on the table, but why Elite River here for Mongo, you think? Yeah, I'm not sure. I probably would have taken uh, Ozer's Mansion first as well. Um, maybe they just wanted to try to get it out, not get it out of the way, but, you know, take a take a weird swing. Do, you know, go to the go to the spot that's maybe not as uh, guaranteed as uh, as some other players think that it is. So you might, you know, you might sneak in a really good item or a really powerful Esper uh, that your opponent might not might not even look at. Yeah, very well said, because Elite River does take some time, but that's the whole point of what coming to this check, is that maybe it takes a little bit of time, and it's worth that time invested. But let's and see what it like, is. Yeah, like we said before, you never know where you're going to run into a, a Gigantos or something. This is a vanilla Ultras, uh, Ultras 4, 3, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, Bismarck for uh, Realm and Mongre on the raft. Let's see what Bismarck does. I am shocked uh, One Free Fits is not going to Elite River because he is the bigger proponent of the Elite River play. So He he does love rafting. Yeah, Tiger not going outside of his traps. I wonder what's going on there. Oh, Magre checking out the beginner's house. How often do you like going in there? Uh, especially with Locke, I try, to, I try to go in there in the World of Ruin. But there is a monster in a box there. Uh, we do know that there's an offering uh, on the on the field somewhere. I believe it was. God, where did Fitz find that? I completely forgot. It was the Zetzer. So here, it was the Zetzer ah. for check. So Magre has it. So here's the answer to my question. Here's the answer to that question for you. If I had did what Fitz did, where I loot the I loot the uh, fixed dice. Now in the back of my mind, I am saying, hey, I really need to go into that room and, and see if there's an offering in there for this fixed dice. Mm -hmm. But as soon as that offering, I find that offering at uh, Zetzer's pre-check, or I find an offering dice. somewhere else, so many dice. outside of a monster in a box, that switch in my mind goes off. Now that I have the offering, I'm never going to that room again. Yeah, exactly. It's You want to get the offering. I think that's really the only... That's the I think pieces. probably the only monster in a box that people are actually going to be looking for. Uh, you know, if you run, if you come across a Gigantos, or you manage to steal a couple Minervas from the Pugs along the way, that's just kind of like a bonus. Mm -hmm. But the real reason to be checking Monster, uh, Monster in a Box Mimics, uh, would be to get that, get that uh, offering. I, I do like finding the uh, the four Ghost, and then having a broad convenient. So it's nice being at level three because those appear twice. They're in two different boxes in the middle of the game, so thus they're in two different boxes and worlds collide. I, I'm not, you know, really upset if I have a rod to break, I can't remember. and I come across those uh, those might, ghosts. You just break that rod, and that fight's over, that. and then you're on like level seven, eight, nine, and you're on your way. Gonna... I do get really salty when they all decide to die separately, though. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got a raid from Moogleplex. Raid of five, party of five. Moogleplex, thank you for the raid. Hope all is well in your side of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a treat for y'all. Yeah. Uh, we are 16 minutes into Magre versus One Free Fits. This is an upper echelon matchup. Can't get much more highly skilled in this matchup than between these two players. That Bismarck, by the way. Uh, Cure 2 is a spell. Not really that interesting because we got uh, Setzer with health. Uh -huh. But Strength plus 2 on that Esper. Oh my goodness. So Magre popped that on, on lock. Is probably just going to leave it there for the rest of the game. That would be my guess. Yeah, the better you find those Strength plus 2, those Magic Power plus 2 Espers, the better, because the longer they sit on your characters, the more those stats pay off and build up. Fitz coming back and tearing house through this uh, this Inferno fight. Got multiple, like, 6-6-5s six, six, uh, in that nice. Genji Glove offering roll. And we're leaving with a nice shield this time. So uh, oh. this Inferno fight going much better for one free Fitz. You'll love to see it. There's another good reason to have pearl rods uh, if you happen to run into this jerk. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard this guy doesn't like pearl. What else doesn't he like, uh, Turzman? Besides shirts. Is it fire? I don't think so. I think it's, uh, God, what is it? Pearl? I mean, he doesn't like the offering. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> exact offerings and Illuminas he's not a big fan of because in the second yeah. half of the Doom fight, uh, in this half he's in right now, he will get the image status. But if you have an offering that will uh, penetrate the image, as will the Illumina, because the Illumina will never miss. 
yeah, blink and you miss it. One free fits just obliterating that inferno that uh, gave him a little bit of trouble earlier, and so. got an Illumina out of it. That was pretty good. Very nice. Uh, Love it, to see those. If Fitz had stuck to his stripes and gone to Elite River, as he has appeared in the chat now, a one a wild one free Fitz has appeared. Uh, if he had stuck to his stripes, gone to Elite River, we could be sitting on that Illumina and a strength plus two SR. Plus two Esper. Let's see if he. Ooh, yeah. uh, let's see if he goes back to his roots. He's in the neighborhood. He's just right around the corner from it. Is he going there? Oh no, he's going as far uh -oh. away as possible. He's going to the future instead. Yeah, there's no there's no rafting in this world, unfortunately. Meanwhile, Magre tearing through something uh, at Terra's check in the Narsh mines there. Whatever. Oh no, wait, that was the doom. Okay. Yeah, he gets his doom, <laughs> and he went back and got the dragon horn. So uh, his check count is building up six checks at 18 minutes. That is three checks good. a minute plus some change. But keep in mind, we don't have to loot anymore. Uh, so that check count will go up quite fast. Oh yeah, I guess now that you mention it, the both uh, both groups have a pretty decent amount of stuff. Uh, maybe not some great. Looks like maybe not the best helmets in the world. But uh, got a red jacket, got uh, that snow muffler on Setzer. Mm -hmm. Sitting pretty. So, uh, Magre has the strength, a strength plus two Esper, and Fitz has a magic power plus two Esper. Uh, which one would you rather have, Herdsman? I think I might like the strength Esper a little bit more. I, I found that it's a lot easier to get magic pretty strong without the stat buff. Mm -hmm. Manipulation, you know, you can pop like ma Magus hats tend to be pretty, uh, pretty easy to find. Uh, you can double up on the earrings. There's all sorts of uh, swords and pieces of equipment that give you, you know, sometimes upwards of plus seven magic in the case of the uh, the Magus rod or the uh, enhancer. Mm -hmm. But it's I always find it a lot harder to get my physical attackers up to, you know, over three or four thousand by the end of the game. Mm hmm. So I'd like to find that strength, uh, especially when you have Locke there. If you run into a Valiant Knife and Locke ends up with like 80 plus strength by the end of the game, there, he's just going to buzzsaw his way through everything. Yes, indeed. Uh, it looks like uh, one free fifth is going to do a Curse Shield play. I believe that was a total of seven battles. So, and Worlds Collide. Uh, we don't have to do 255 battles to unlock the Curse Shield, or else that would be silly and pointless. Um, we just have to do a random number between 7 and 14 in Ultras League. And 7 is the lowest possible number of that outcome, so that's a great pickup. Yeah, definitely. That's something you want to get on as early as possible. So, and in the case of uh, Leet River, something that you might want to get on before you go to uh, a check like Leet River or, or even uh, Ozer's Mansion. Yeah, I'm going to put you on the spot, Turdsman. Uh, at any Ooh. point in time this seed, do you think Fitz is going to make his way to Leet River? Hmm. See now the problem with you asking it like that is that now I'm trying to like like 4D chess game the game the question because like why would you ask me that question if it wasn't something that was so I'm turning into that uh, that one guy from Princess Bride. I, I, I just think it's the, the next most... like seven minutes talking myself <laughs> around in circles. I think it's the most important question of the seed because uh, Fitz is the president, chairman, treasurer, and vice president of the Leap Rifter Leap River Craft Rafting Association. And uh, also the only member, by the way. So it, it's a little hypocritical if he doesn't go. We may have to revoke all of his titles that are associated with Elite River if he does not go there, given the yeah, opportunity. I think, I think we might have to. Especially yeah, since, you know, like, why wouldn't you go? I guess he probably... May, maybe maybe the assumption was, hey, nobody's looking. So. Exactly. Uh, I know we got a race on our hands, but more pertinent to the to the subject is, will Fitz make his way to Elite River, yes or no? That's what we're I'm going to go with... For. I'm going to go with yes. I'm going to go with yes as well, because if I know Fitz, he's a man of integrity, if nothing else. I would like to say, though, that uh, if Fitz does not go to Leet River, then I'm going to assume it's because of maybe some sort of, you know, like sometimes you're not supposed to go to uh, a local lake because there's like too much duck poop in, in the water. Everybody's mm -hmm. going to get sick. Might be something like that going on. Oh, that makes sense. Red algae or whatnot. That makes sense, except I don't think that we have that coded in the Worlds Collide. Uh, maybe that got rolled into an update I missed, but I'll double check. Ooh, Magre showing some uh, good showing some good game knowledge, stealing a Minerva from this goddess fight. Great heads up play. Uh, Got check up on Magre a little bit. Uh, four, at, four characters, three espers, one dragon. Um, we're pretty neck and neck so far. I wouldn't say one runner 
is uh, out ahead of the other. Uh, we're, we're pretty close, close. A lot of common path between the two. Yeah, I think Mogre maybe has uh, one more check at this point, just because they, they've done the um, the Terra check into getting the, the second weapon from the uh, Narsh weapon shop. But uh, One Free Fits has... Basically has an endgame character at this point with Setzers being synced up pretty well, throwing, throwing some dice. Oh, they missed it. Both bosses going down to luck. Yeah, that fixed dice carrying so far. Um, fixed dice fantastic early. Uh, it will taper off a little bit. Um, if you were to plot it out, plot it out on a chart graph, you see as the levels increase, the DPS goes down just a little bit. But that doesn't matter. The future, you can't worry about the future. You gotta worry about the now and just get through the now and worry about the future later. Absolutely. It's pretty easy to pivot a fixed dice user into something else uh, later on. You know, maybe you've been teaching them magic along the way, what have you. But early on in the game, it's really nice to have it, especially when you have an offering uh, along with you, because then you know that you'll be able to hit anything in the game. Oh no, Fitz didn't have warp stones when he came up here. Do you think he... Uh -oh. That's I, I I'm not opposed to coming up here without warp stones. Uh, there are some other spots that are hard no for me if I didn't have warp stones, such as Zozo, which is on the table possibly. I think this one might be a hard no for me too. Because uh, speaking it's... of Fenrir over on uh, Magre's side, oh very nice. Learn warp. All right, well you don't need warp if you have warp stones. It's true. So, pivotal moment here. We're, we're going to kind of overlap in the quick checks that uh, each one has done or not done. Um, where do you think character number five is going to lay, uh, Turdsman? Where, where, where do you think we're going to pick him up? I mean, neither neither player has gone to the Phoenix Cave yet, right? Like, that, that would probably be the most likely spot, uh, just because Locke was a... Locke was the first find the you know wasn't in the starting party i think i would say that would probably be the most likely spot uh -oh. very true uh, uh we tried uh, we, we tested <laughs> i played this for 10 we tried minutes so apparently we needed to wait for 25 minutes oh man oh goodness that guy really uh, wanted some pizza what do we i think i'm gonna pause i'm gonna pause uh i'm gonna let fitz's stream keep going and then we'll uh i think fitz they don't they sync up? up yeah we'll, we'll catch up eventually so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Pure Leaf Tea, fantastic, great product, uh, whatever. Um, yeah, that's fine. What did Fitz find in the Coliseum? We were so distracted by that pizza. I think he found the Luminous. Ooh, that, that would be a good reason to go back in. Oh my goodness, that's Lumina for leather hats. Against and you have the to bomb. fight a bomb for it? That yeah, is man. unbelievable. And this economy, Everybody's getting one. I would get 17. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> you get a couple extra for some money later. Yeah, why not? That's a good looking dog. But I'm sorry, I got distracted by the dog. Uh I, I think I would probably take three here. I would take all the leather hats I had because we have two Illumina wearers. Why not? Yeah, I would trade in as many. I know there's at least one Genji glove. I would take that off of the fixed dice user immediately, frankly. Pop it on uh, Lock or Terra. Have him go to town. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to pause Fitz just for a moment so he can get lined back up with Magre. He's about 60 seconds behind, so we'll let Magre take care of his Inferno here. Oh, it doesn't we, keep uh, the VOD in, running. No, uh, high-tech high okay. production tonight, by the way, but we'll let Magre get cut up. No no big deal. We, we can we can audible. It's the, the unfortunate reality of streaming to Twitch. Yes, indeed. When you, you want... You want to make a, a little emote of Terra getting hit in the face with a pie or whatever. <laughs> I Means you're gonna have to have some some ads on your stuff. I, I will say Mog raids uh, Inferno fights going a little bit better than uh, Fitz's did. He has a little more offense under his belt when uh, he came down here than uh, than Fitz. So I think this was an Illumina. Speaking of Illuminas, uh, I think this was an yes. Illumina. So that's gonna help us get his uh, lock online with that strength plus two Esper. Yeah, that'll be a great find for Magre at this point. All right, there yeah, it has on. a lot more offense, but also a pretty decent amount of extra defense. Uh, I think that was that was kind of what ended up happening with Fitz. He had you know a couple good pieces of armor, but just didn't quite have enough HP to withstand uh, one of Inferno's attacks. Which, you know, no matter how um, 
no matter how early you run into some of these late game bosses, just with the way that uh, damage gets calculated with some of those higher level abilities, uh, you know, you can still take uh, one to two hundred damage from something something pretty simple. Uh, I guess one boss is Lumina is not great against would be Goddess because Goddess does absorb the Holy Element, so all those pearl frogs yep. are. Uh, not going to do you any good. And this is a little scarier here for Fitz because uh, facing Goddess at this spot um, <laughs> is inherently a little more dangerous than if you face her in a normal spot where you can pincer her. Yeah. Because all of those bolt edges and some attacks that only hit two people, they, they hit all four now. Yeah, Locke going down, unfortunately. Uh, I believe Locke has the uh, curse shield on right now. Yeah, uh, but sets her with a fixed ice. Uh, all of the nasty things that Goddess can do, like Love Token, uh, are not going to matter with that fixed dice offering. And I think that's going to get uh, Fitz through this here now. Yeah, I think I think Fitz is done. Yeah, one more good roll. Get not even good needed. good rolls. Well done. Uh, Magra done with his Inferno. We'll get Gotta his get Illumina. His Illumina. Don't believe Magra has gone to the Coliseum yet, so... No, he has not. Um, remains to be seen if he will or not. All right, another Esper for Fitz. Um, the checks are starting to line back up against each other because we haven't seen a lot of divergence between these two runners, except for the Elite River, and then uh, obviously Magre has already done his Will Gate check. Uh, let's see where uh, Fitz is going to go here next. He's in the neighborhood of Daryl's Tomb, so that could be an option for him. That that would be that would be a good a good pick, I think. I uh, I guess I have a question for you now. Uh, when you're in a situation like this, you're kind of running out of checks. Um, you haven't found that new character yet. Uh, is there a particular heuristic you try to hold to uh, when you're in a situation like this? Uh, I would keep doing the better checks and the more better checks. Like when I say better checks, I mean not Leet River, not Zozo, um, or, or in this case, of later in the Seed Phoenix Cave. I would keep doing the better checks until I got you know, with just the, the checks I really didn't want to do. And I kind of get a little more angry on the inside every time I do one more of the bear checks and I'm having the transition to, oh, man, I might have to go to Burning House. I might have to go to Phoenix Cave yeah. when I really don't want to. So I just kind of keep hoping and praying that uh, the seed is not going to do that to me. And if it does it to you, oh, well. Um, it if, if you want, I maybe would take a stab at maybe doing one or two of the worst ones. But I'm definitely not going to keep, you know, the better checks on the table and start filtering through worse ones just to, just to hope. Yeah, I try to get the, the quickest ones possible. Like, Daryl's Tomb is a really good uh, good pick. That's probably where I would be going to. Yeah, Daryl's uh, Tomb question. is uh, not not as long as, as you think. Plus, you get a few chests. Plus, there's a monster in the box if you want it. And also, it's obviously peekable. Although, you do have to walk all the way through and get to the end before you can uh, see what the reward is. And the uh, extra save point at the end there can be handy, too. If you happen to find something really good along the way, you could just pop another save uh, just in case you have to have to reset out. Uh, quick question from the chat. What are they looking for in item shops? Uh, well, and then looks like they did answer their own question. I was assuming warp stones, but well, uh, uh, Magre does have warp as a spell on lock. Well, I, I think Fitz hadn't found sleeping bags yet. Oh, no? Okay. Yeah, that'd be another very good reason to go into an item shop. Those are super important. All right, so es our character is not at Daryl's Tomb. That is mm. Kieran the Esper, which is a good reward, but again, we'd rather have character number five than Esper number five at this point in time. Oh, no. Yeah, this is this is where I start getting worried. Uh, ooh, let's see what the Spire does with... This Spire is going to do a lot of damage because uh, Tritok has next to no magic defense, as you can see. Ooh! Yeah, Tritok does have a uh, very high physical defense, but no magic defense. So that's why that fire coming out, fire one, doing almost 3,000 damage. Yep, we'll like get the mop up it. done with the dice. Yep, very efficient okay. menuing there. Getting your ice shield transitioned over to the character you wanted on in the middle of a battle. No need to go to a menu, do it. Just do it here. That is, I'm always impressed by that uh, particular technique. It, you know, spending that. 10 some odd seconds that you got to wait for the boss to fully animate their internal explosion take that take that opportunity to swap shield around or 
move uh, sleeping bags to the top of the list or something fun like that. Yeah. Uh, looks like Fitz, in his search of character number five, is going to check out Bowser's Mansion. Uh, Cure three on that Esper, not much else. Oh, and Mute. Mute's important. Mute's a good one to find. I think that's the second Cure three uh, on the Esper list. Not a whole lot of offense. There was Pearl, I think, on uh, on one of them. But... Oh, as we heard Fitz said, he is looking for Atlas Armor. Oh, and he found some and Economizers. That's going to be beautiful because he's done all that hard work to uncurse the Curse Shield. So now he is finding himself some free Ultima along with all of his free Illuminas. Illuminas and Ultimas, he doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, that's, that's what you want to have. The two... The two best us in the game. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh crap! Oh, oh no! Oh no! Speaking of uh crap, uh, that's not good. Uh, does this gonna hurt? And uh, couple. Oh no! That Zetzer's confused with fixed oh. ice. Oh no! Oh, and to the left Zetzer, or on yourself. There you go. Hey. There we go. He unmuddled himself with his attack. Uh. Sorry, Locke, you're going to eat it here, but... Oh, I like Man. this. I like that uh, attempted steal from uh, Fitz there. Why buy the Economizer oh, where you can take it for yeah, free? Yeah, yeah, I forgot to have those. I mean, this is a this is a cut and run. Like, I, I nope out of this fight every single time. But... Uh, Fitz why here you... showing me why maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, why would you run from that guy? He's so cute. Very well drawn. I like his big smile. And I'm pretty sure that dinosaur he is supposed to be is not a carnivore. He's a herbivore, so not a lot to be scared of there. That's true. Imagine if they knew Ultima back then. They... Ultima could probably take out Meteor, right? Oh, wait, no, that's Holy. Most likely. Mm, that was really... <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I see what you did there. I that's see what you did yuck. there. Different Esper. I'm surprised they didn't. I think you can find that Esper in the slums or something. <laughs> Alright, so uh, looks like Magre heard there's good stuff at Owser's because he's making his way over there as well. Magic power plus two Esper for Magre now, so now he'll have 100 magic power realm at some point in time. Along with his 100 strength uh, lock, or Terra, looks like he gave it to Terra. Plus 100 HP on that uh, other, on another Esper there. I think it was Crusader. Uh, it's always nice to have that in case you run into a Valiant Knife. Um, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily give you what you want for uh, the Atma weapon. It just makes it so that you lose less uh, when you get hurt. But having a, an HP plus 100 on a Valiant Knife user is as good, if not better, than having a Strength plus 2 Esper on them the whole game. So Magre is fading the Relic Shop here, so he won't see those Economizers, but he's also not doing the Cursed Shield, so he won't have Ultima. Uh, Pop Quiz, Turdsman, is he going to fight the Brachosaur, or is he going to run away? I'm going to uh, say run. Uh, no, he's he's going no, for he's, it. He's okay. going for it. Kudos. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, he knows what he holds. He wants it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Definitely want that if you're going to be uh, trying to throw out Ultimas later. That makes sense. Oh, he gets uh -oh. a ribbon. Oh, no. Oh, at least he got the ribbon. Double sneezes happening on screen. Yeah, it's not even allergy season. Yes, speak for yourself. <laughs> Alright, so... Agree? I, was, I wonder if that was intentional there. Trying to get this... Uh, just peek in the fight early on, maybe. It could have been intentional because this fight will be the same fight as all of the chest in the floating chest room. So you can uh, farm this fight a little bit, but I, I think that was intention uh, unintentional because he's got great levels on his characters. And he's not really in any danger of uh, being ahead of scaling. Uh, so no character here. Where do we go next? Man. <laughs> um... That's a strength plus one Esper, so now we basically have all four characters milking an Esper stat boost. That's a fantastic. Um, that's that's yeah, that's, that's where you want to be. You don't want to have to swap around a plus two Esper. You know, decide which character is going to get it for the twenty levels that you're going to get right away versus which character is going to get it for maybe five later on. I think, I think this is probably when I might suck it up and try Phoenix Cave. 
Uh, uh, Phoenix Cave, well, we still have Kefka and Nars. So here's the nice thing about Fitz not doing Wilk yet, yet is that he can kind of more conveniently ride in his Kefka at Nars check, whereas That's true. Magre would be doing some backtracking. So Fitz does have that going for him. Um, Magre is ahead on checks a little bit, and he has a little more insider information on where a character could not be. But Fitz has a little more... Uh, Fitz has a little more convenient routing ahead of him if he chooses to take it. Yeah, now that you mention I, I that's something I've been trying to do also is save outside of Narsh before I go and check that. That way, if it's if it's something I don't want to see, then I could just eh, save yourself a walk down at the very least. Well, in this situation, it would, it, I, I think you just take it no matter whatever it is because you're walking up there and well, you've true. already done the Welk Gate. So unless you want to do the Welk Gate again, I, I just take it and walk down. I think if I hadn't found any dead checks uh, up to that point, I might be a little reluctant to uh, to just do it no matter what. But I think both both runners have ran into I, I think two or three at this point. So yeah, you're right. Just might as well do it. Well, let's count them real fast. We got the offering from Zetzers. Uh, we got an Illumina from one dead check, and I, I believe tunnel we armor. Had... Yeah, tunnel armor was the Illumina. Uh, Fitz is going to see if Bulbwiz is a character. That's a great heads up play here. We're in the neighborhood. Let's go see what the kids are up to. Oh, I forgot about this one. Yes, this is a good call. You can you can ask that uh, that weird little girl uh, who they who they happen to be worshiping right now. Yeah. All right. Moment of truth for Fitz. Is this character number five, or does his search continue? The tension is building. The tension is mounting. Little girl, what do you have for us? And at the very least. Not with a three-character party. Phantom, oh, oh no. Oh no. Yeah, mm. not bad. I mean, it's an Esper, so it's progression, but yeah. definitely not what Fitz wanted to see there. Pro you can come back for that. Uh, yeah, not 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 the progression we wanted. And even worse news, he didn't pet the dogs on his way out. So mm. no Wheat River, no dogs. Fitz, what are we doing here? Unforced errors. All right, so we're gonna get. A Phoenix K play here now from Fit. So on the table we had Leet River, we had uh World of Balance Zozo, and we had Kefkat and Arsenal Gate. We are gonna do Phoenix Cave, so let's see if this is character number five. So I think uh World of Balance Zozo, I think Magre was doing that earlier. I'm pretty sure that's where Crusader was. Yeah, so Magre is down to Daryl's tomb, which he is doing right now. Phoenix Cave, Kefka at Narsh. And his mobiles, but a mobiles who will obviously peek and then say, no thank you, good sir, or good madam. Yeah, you can keep it. For now. For now, we may come back for it if we go on a cool character run. Yeah, completely possible. There's only, you know, all, all you need is two characters to get, uh, get where you need to be. So very... Very possible that uh, both of our uh, that one or both of our runners will just find two characters back to back, and then having to make some some tough decisions on where to find those extra espers. Yeah. Try talk from Magre should give him no problems. Fitz is about halfway through his Phoenix Cave check. Parties are still a spot, but they will shortly reconvene. I think Fitz is going to pass on the dragon here. Yeah, that'd be my guess. Um, they did put uh, three in that one party, so maybe maybe going to deal with it without having Setzer around, but uh, there's plenty of dragons out there. Uh, I think Fitz has fought two? Because, yeah, they went up to uh, to do the, the Tritok spot, not the Tritok boss. Yep, we did the Tritok. We did, he's done Ice Dragon and the Opera Dragon, or the Dirt Dragon. Yeah. Dra Dirt Durgan, whatever you like to call that guy. Dirt Durgan. I love the little bouncing animation for jumping over those rocks. It's so dorky. It's so high tech. Doing, doing, doing. Yeah, Magre throwing out some fire ones with Terra, also doing uh, about 2.5k. Very, very impressive. Um, again, as I alluded to earlier, so far, fire one is the best spell we have from an offensive standpoint. Yeah. We have her. Oh. Think we were wrong. Look what Fitz is doing. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, fire. Hey, it's the little guy. Yeah, speaking of fire one, this is a, another fight where it could come in handy, but not when we have the Luminas. Or when everybody's frozen. Oh, okay, just Terra. Thank goodness. 
So here's something I noticed while uh, Magre was in the menu earlier, is that he has a Genji Glove. So I don't know where he found that Genji Glove, but if if it's in his uh, plethora of Haluma that's come across it, that is big news. That is big time news for Fitz. I think Fitz has one. I thought um, I thought they were using a Genji Glove fixed dice uh, offering sets earlier. Maybe that's what he's using it for. I, I want to say enough. it was in the armory. Maybe. No, not the armory. It was in the the cave that um, the sealed gate. Yeah, the the little cave underneath the stairs that you can get to with four chests in it. Okay. Cat hood was the uh, reward from the uh, ice dragon mimicking the red dragon, and we are moments away from seeing this is character number five. I don't mind a cat hood. Uh, obviously, something you want to find early on in the game so you can maximize the GP gain you get out of it. But it's a good helmet. Fantastic helmet. Best helmet in the game. Just the poor, poor players that cannot wear it. Well, one of the better characters can wear it, but unfortunately, they're the only one. Shadow. Ooh. Ooh. Uh oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. And uh, Magre, not shortly behind, is coming on in here as well, so they'll get the character number five here. Also. Runic. Uh, Runic Shadow doesn't move the needle much for me, but it doesn't matter. We just need one more character. <clears throat> So Shadow's very interesting to find as character number five after you've scraped a bunch of your other checks because he has two incredible checks. Um, the Velt Cave, which it looks like Fitz is heading over there right away to check that. That's very smart. Super agree with that play. Uh, and the Gao's father's weird little shack that he's got up there, which both of them are oh, yeah. pretty fast. The Cave in the Velt has a couple weird little uh, animations that got to play, but you can at the very least peek it ahead of time. Um, and then the one at Gao's dad's house is just free. Uh, always nice. Unfortunately, his other check is the Floating Continent, which is... Takes a, a while. Takes a while, if you will. Yeah, it's it's mid-grade at an uh, early game. It's another good source of, uh, you know, fixed encounters. You can use that to, to gain some levels early on. But at minute 44, it, it can be a real drag. <clears throat> Although I, I seem to remember Fitz at one point going in there at... Um, God, this was six or seven months ago. I want to say it was at a, one of the Coliseum flag sets where Fitz went in there really late and managed to find the two espers that uh, that he needed for Skip uh, mm. while the other runners were still kind of scrambling for it and made a made a very strange play that uh, really paid off for him. Gained, gained him almost like 10, 15 minutes. And there's Gao. Yeah, there's character number six. How quickly we go from meeting character number five to now needing character no mores. So this is very interesting. This uh, this puts this puts Fitz and Magre back kind of on track in terms of how many pieces they have left of progression to get. Uh, Fitz is going to get a sixth character, still needs three espers. Magre is going to get their fifth character. They need a character and an esper. But Fitz knows where at least one is. Yep. I think, uh, in uh, Mobile is, so. And then um, a couple other spots that would be easy, you know, just running up and grabbing the thing at um, thing at Gao's father's house. Be nice and quick. And maybe I was talking I was talking smack about it, but maybe uh, jumping onto the floating continent might not be a bad idea. Wouldn't be a bad idea at all, but I think if, if Magare is going to do the floating continent, he's going to do it right away when he sees a shadow versus later, but I, I don't think he will because he's at 8 espers, whereas Fitz is probably more plausible being at 6 espers because yeah. we need one more character, and if it's th 3 espers or 2 espers, it, it's not that big of a deal. That means there's a character somewhere else we can find, and we'll probably find that last esper somewhere along the way. For Magre, I don't think we want to go up there unless we get really character strung out, but we know we're not, that's not the truth because of what the information Fitz has given us. So I don't think we there's any possibility we see a floating continent play from Magre. So I do want to point out Fitz did pet Interceptor. So he's, he's all is one forgiven. for two on his dog petting, and he's zero for one on his Leet River players. Um, I don't think he'll go back to Mobilis to correct one of them, but there's still a small chance he goes to Leet River to correct that one. I mean, he might go back to Mobilis. I think uh, if if he only manages to squeeze two more espers out of Shadow here. Oh, uh, gonna check uh, the Velt first. Yeah. Uh, if he finds his uh, 
dinosaur here again. That's another chance on an economizer. Speak of the Thanks. devil. Oh, man. Beautiful. Showed up right away. Yeah. Uh, get into that menu. You don't want this guy lingering too long because he can sneeze you. He can disaster you. I heard he can do some other things as well. Maybe he'll show us. I think he's got a multiplier attack also, but I don't. I do not remember. I don't fight this guy very often. Ooh, dead uh, check you... for God's father's house. Oh no! What, what was what was the reward? Did we see? Cat hood. Well, that's two cat hoods at least. Uh, we're not getting the steals we want. But unfortunately, the dinosaur is being very docile. He's not too aggressive this afternoon. Yeah, just some regular attacks. Up, oh, another ribbon. Hey, it's Edgar. Okay, now now is where this begins. <laughs> you find <laughs> character after character, and you don't want them anymore. Well, who said you don't want Edgar? Because Edgar gives you a very fast check. That's true. So I think Fitz is going to end up with 22 check skip, if not more checks, because we know Gal's father's house is dead. That's going to put him at 17. Uh, then he has to find three more espers. That's going to put him at 20. I think no matter what, he ends up at 20 checks. So I think he's going to have a check skip some way, somehow. Yeah, I I think 20 is, 20 is the sweet spot. You can just go through that middle lane, fight a couple bosses, you know, fight a boss, fight a, fight a dragon, mm -hmm. skip the rest of the tower. Uh, see, checking out the merchant wares. Uh, more warp stones. I don't found those warp stones. Very nice. Uh, cat hood in store. I think we're going straight to Figaro Throne. That's a good call here. Just get get as many of the quick ones out of the way as you can uh, before you go to the the guaranteed Esper. Uh, Magre is going to find his gal. Magre is pretty much at this point in time going right behind Fitz. Maybe in just a little different order, but. While he is still technically ahead of pieces of progression, because once Magre finishes, I mean, once Fitz finishes the checks he is doing, he's going backwards in time and doing something Magre had already done. So they're pretty much neck and neck, despite it looking like, like Magre is chasing Fitz through these checks. Found the Yeti on the throne. <clears throat> Very nice. They finally recognized that he is the one who should be king. Um, worst case, that's another snow muffler for uh, Fitz if he doesn't want to take the <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. the game. Best so character weird looking treasure chest. snow muffler, either war. So if Magre goes and peeks Mobla's after this, they'll they'll have their go mode sooner rather than later. Which I don't think they've looked in there just yet. Knuckly Khan coming in with the good emotes. I like seeing that little guy jumping around. Uh... Here's another thing Mogray can do is he can do the auction house. Ooh, that's a dance sword tech cow. That's a pretty yeah, that's a good cow. Uh, dog pet from Mogray. Uh, thank you, good sir. We appreciate that. Excellent. You'll love to see it. Uh, this is going to be an esper for fit, so he's back on the path of needing two espers, while as Mogray just needs one. So neck and neck here. Now, let's see if fits. Do you think uh, you climb? climb up to see what Kefka at Narsh is at this point or do you just write that off you don't you know you don't need to get that anymore uh You've zero plenty of other options I think zero percent um yeah opera house I'm assuming the auction house is a little more attractive attractive than that to me uh or, or even maybe even serpent trench because uh well maybe not serpent trench I, I take that back if you got smoke bombs or warp stones you can you can slip through that one pretty quick so Magra is doing his uh, Water Ruin Narsh climb. Magra is in the check skip territory as well. I forget what was up here. Oh, it's Ice Dragon and Tri Talk. Yeah, well, yeah, but I forget <laughs> what the. Uh, th thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> All right, no further questions. I think it was an Esper, but I forget which one. I think it was an Esper as well. I just don't. I don't remember which one either. I think that. Maybe this well, I guess was... Tritox, but... Nice. Well, that's Golem for uh, Ritz. Yeah, Golem and Fenrir. I really like having both of them. Um, if Because uh, Fenrir can help you out on a couple of the other, other tiers. 
you know, you can use that on tier one or tier two, either to save yourself some damage or save yourself some time, and save the golem for tier three. Uh, Fitz, some way, somehow, or excuse me, Magre somehow learned Bolt three on uh, his characters, which is a great spell. Um, Doesn't help well, him in this dragon fight. No, but... not not in this fight, but with the rest of the sea, where he's had that realm with a plus two magic power Esper for the past hour, who's probably approaching one hundred and forty magic power by now. Uh, I think that Bolt 3 might do some damage. So that 0% uh, bet was looking pretty good here. Uh, one free fits. Take it on Kefka at Narsh. <laughs> Alright. Uh, Kefka at Narsh. We'll see what that is. Mongre didn't tell us what this is, so we have no idea. Uh, I want to point out that there is a lot of good armor on all of their characters. Yeah. Yeah, this this feels good. I I, I love getting to this point near the end of the game where I know that like oh thank god nobody's going to take a stray hit you know nobody's going to run into Marshall and just eat 6,000 damage from a regular attack off that guy because they've been wearing leather armor for the past hour and a half it's a pretty simple fight got a lot of Illuminas I don't think there's any instant death magic. I, I might have been wrong about that Doom uh, earlier. Well, we have Odin, but I don't know. That's true. Well, Odin was the plus two magic power, I think. Yeah, because it's on Realm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we got some. We got some. He's queuing it up. He, he knows what to put. He knows what's hand. coming. Yeah. This isn't Fitz's first rodeo, I've heard. I mean, maybe first one in this uh, in this town. You know, had to, had to leave had to leave last town that, uh, that Fitz was in. I'm not sure what the story is there. We don't ask a lot of questions necessarily. You know, you do the drug test, you do the background check. Mm -hmm. If that if that comes up clean, you, hey. Hey. Who am I to judge? Who are you to judge? That is Esper number eight for uh, Fitz. He has one more Esper from Go Mode, and he knows where Phantom yeah, is. Uh, Magre just has his unlock, but Magre is one check, oh, excuse me, yeah, one check behind Fitz. So Fitz is going to spend some time doing uh, one more check to get his last Esper while Magre, is, I assume, is going to go for check skip here. So we're going to be entering the switches at a very, very close time together. I love it when this happens. Uh, you know, when when both players end up, oh, no, just jumping right in, huh? Oh, oh no. probably going to go down oh, the middle, yeah, middle, middle lane. lane, maybe. Yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. There it is. All right. There we go. Magre, very seasoned player, knows what's up. Easily the most fun, the, just the most hype that these races can get is if yep, okay. it appears for, you know, 40 minutes of the race that, oh, one player is like 10 minutes ahead of the other player. This is, you know, this we, we kind of see how this is happening. And then just at the last minute, for some reason, at the statues, mm -hmm. they sync up and, and start getting really close together. That's that's always fun to watch. You, you can see here here fits in the background a little bit because the audio is from from his video. He's uh, figuring out the good news that 21 plus one no, equals 22, and 22 is the magic the number. The other two on camp. Uh, does he pet the dogs though? No, he does not. Mm. Uh, that's a sham. Maybe on the way out. Maybe on the way out. Uh, let's. Let, we can hope. We can hope. Oh. Now. Did make a dog cease to exist? That's that's uh, that's gonna that's gonna, we're gonna have to take some points away for that one. Yeah. This is uh. This has to be the most sacrilegious run one player can do that Fitz is putting on tonight. No Elite River, no dogs. Absolutely incredible. What we are seeing tonight. Rex Soul for Magre at the Toilet Atmos spot. Gives him no problem. Uh, Ice 2 taking care of that business. Yes, indeed. Uh, what Fitz needs to do here is he needs to take care of this version of Fumbaba, and he will blow two characters away. And the last two characters standing will fight it out with the random boss for the right to take Esper Phantom as their prize. Who will win? We will never know. Until they do get out, of course. Fits his two high damage characters, uh, making it through the Bob of Breath. That's what you want to see. Oh no, that's hiding. Hey, he's got Illuminas for days. This ain't no problem. Uh, what's he looking for? He's looking for that pro rod. Uh, I, I don't yeah. think he, I think that bolt, that bolt He's three. probably good. I don't think we. Well, maybe he doesn't have the bolt three. Maybe uh, only fits. I think yeah, Magre has the bolt three. But eh, you know, I I, I also I, I feel fits on this one. 
uh, you're you're looking you're looking at the timer. You're seeing mm -hmm. it about to click over to that sixth digit or fifth digit, excuse me. And you just you just want this boss fight to be over with. You don't want to don't want to risk somebody getting confu clawed or something ridiculous. Yep. Boss fight over. Phantom acquired. Party reassembled. We're heading to Kepka's tower. Uh, will he pet the dogs on the way out? Remains to be seen. Uh, one last chance to redeem himself. He uh, does not redeem himself. I had to look Absolutely away from the screen. Absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, I'm tempted to cut his video right now. This is just... You hate to see this sort of thing happen. You know, you hate you hate to see a, a, a player with as much promise, uh, as much, as much, you know, what I thought was integrity I, I, as one free Fitz, but... Uh, for all intents and purposes... Up to today, Fitz has been an outstanding member of the community, a great guy all around. But after tonight, I, I don't know. I thought I was all wrong. You thought you know a person, but I know. Can you truly know a person over the internet? Apparently not. Okay, so we are forming our parties at identical times. This is as tight as of a race. As oh you yeah, look at it. that. That's yeah. great. Um, yeah, we're, we're and going he in. leaves the. Mm. Good. Miss gracious. I, well, I guess, I mean, Umaro is the only one with the CDL, so I guess it kind of makes sense <laughs> to leave him up there, but... That makes sense. I, I don't know in this lawless world if you can get tickets or not, but, you know, better safe than sorry. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, they probably don't enforce that too much anymore. Oh my goodness, look at <laughs> Locks Evade. 123. Um, That's a big number. That's a bigger well. number than I've ever seen. I've never seen that number big on the bait before. I don't think it'd be any higher. Uh, looks like we got Atma on Fitz's Ooh. screen, Chatternook on uh, Mogray's screen. These are two yucky bosses. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, uh, they both have both of their locks here. We've been seeing on Strength Espers and have Illuminos for days. So the spike shouldn't give too much problem. Us for either runner, as long as Locke doesn't proc Pearl on too many times. Yeah, I was, that's what I was just about to say. You you don't want to see the procs on the left. You do want to see the procs on the right right now. Yep, 100%, because Chatternook is weak to Pearl, as he is showing off. Magra is showing off with his Alexander hey. summon. Very nice. You don't see that often every day. like to see that big weird robot. The robot castle. Atma down for Fitz. Magre. Uh, let's see if he cast, cast that fire one. Cast that fire one. How much is he going to do, Fit, or Turdsman? Yeah, let's see. I'm going to say 1,700. 15. 2,000. Uh, oh, and it gets the kill. That's all that matters, though. All right, you get you get to play the Price is Right game. <laughs> you get you get to do Plinko after this. All right, one switch for Fitz. One boss for uh, Magre. Neck and neck still. Still neck and neck. It's great. Uh, let's will it into ex existence. We know what two of the bosses are, but we don't know what the other two are. What do you want to see here, Turzman? I mean, we haven't seen uh, we haven't seen the master of all of all magic. Until um, but... now, no. Ooh, oh, ooh, no, this is way better. This is I'm I. This makes me panic more than almost any other boss at this point. Why is that? Because it's a if you don't have enough damage that you can put out right away, which obviously Magre does. I completely forgot that that lock has had a strength Esper on this entire time. That's 7,000 damage <laughs> with an Illuminous Swing. But if you can't do, you know, roughly 10k to that head in about a turn and a half, it's just going to go away. Mm -hmm. And you got to sit there for like a minute. Ooh, some vanilla pearl cast from Fitz. Doing quad nines. Very nice. A good call. Another good, uh, another good time to use that, use that spell. It's when you run into this guy. That's yeah, probably only the only guy you want to cast it on. All right, so Magre like... doing a little Esper shuffle to make sure he's in good preparation for the final fight with his uh, party of two on the switch. Looks like both Odin and Raiden. So that's if you get a little bit lucky, you might be able to get the uh, the instant death on both tiers that uh, it's it's applicable to. Yeah, and we also got Golem and Fenrir as well. So that's double the calmness protection if if we want it, or we can leverage that Fenrir or Golem on tier two for ten hits. 
Yeah, I think uh, Fitz got that Phantom too, so maybe uh, maybe they'll have something fun Even better. up their sleeve with that. Uh, what well, fight for Fitz? This is the last boss Mogre is going to show us of the four statues in Guardian Spot. What is it? It is... Vargas. Vargas. Yeah, nothing too crazy here at the top. Yeah, a little bit of a bummer, but I guess not too much of a bummer because I had to run this seat as well. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I like this from Magre. Is he going to yes. berserk it? Yes, do it. Why is you he doing still, that, Turdsman? You still get the damage buff with fixed dice. It's the it's yes. the wildest thing. All the stuff that all of the stuff that affects fixed dice that oh, no. doesn't affect the Valiant <laughs> Knife, which is very funny. Oh crap! Oh, Does no, he have the a... high evasion backfires? Was it evasion or did he have the ribbon equipped? It must be evasion because he's got the Genji Glove offering. Yeah, I think so. Ah, well. Well, it, no even fun. if he has an Aegis Shield or another Cat Hood that he could equip, you know, that gives him some evasion, so. That's not your fault, Magre. We know what you yeah, were trying to thank do. Thank you, Magre, for trying to. At least one of the two runners tonight gives the audience what they want to see. That's right. So thank you, my friend. Entertain the people. Oh no, uh, Magre stepped over the, the save point and had to remenu. Uh, race this close, we'll see if that comes back to bite him. I love that feeling where you, you do something that costs you maybe five seconds, and then just for the rest of the game, you're like, I had better not lose by four <laughs> seconds, or I... <laughs> um, he, he did give us a peek, he had the ribbon equipped, so that's why his, uh, his Berserk didn't go through. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, one more fight each. So, again, neck and neck going into uh, Final Kefka here. Kind of funny. Both uh, both runners using the exact same thing against Vargas, which is a fixed dice offering setzer with yeah, Gao. With Gao sitting there. Uh, let's see. That's if weird. Fitz could take a peek and see that Berserk if he wanted to. Oh, he, he's not. He's going to let Setzer take care of it. No shame in that. I mean, we saw how, how quickly it went down over on Magre's side. Probably not going to need that extra extra bit of damage. Yeah, one more turn. Mars some horrendous RNG. We'll take care of this for uh, Fitz. Uh, looks like Realm is doing quad nines. Uh, so no problem with that one on the other side of the screen. Yeah, going to end up taking about the same amount of time. But at the very least, Magre doesn't have to worry about a stray proc uh, ruining all of his progress. Ooh, going to take four turns instead of three. Didn't quite have as much. Because I, I think um, Fitz's lock was doing a little over 5,000 with each swing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So zero, zero slightly clock. breaking the damage cap. There we go. Four bolt threes and it's done. Uh, Fitz is done with his Vargas and Ipoos. What is Fitz doing? Fitz, go! Go, Fitz! Oh. Go, Fitz! You got this! In a race this tight, you can't linger. Go! Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, his screen is not broken. There we go. There we go. No need to save. Just go. That's right. There we go. YOLO, as I understand it. So, 104.44 on the switches for Fitz, according to his timer. Magre will be stepping on the switches very shortly. Oh, my God. Yeah, let's see. There, I don't think there's really a huge difference in power between the two runners, so it's uh, it's going to come down to uh, a lot of a little bit of luck from what the uh, what the final boss is going to be doing to them, and just you know, in the moment decision making, you know, figuring out what the right thing to do at the right time is. Uh, One o five fifteen is uh, Madre switch time according to his timer on screen, so. 20, or excuse me, 31 seconds apart on the switches. Down. Neck and neck. Uh, I don't think we Tight race here. Like yeah, very exciting. Maybe we use it on tier one. Let's see what Fitz decides to do here. Tools. He's going to take some swings first. About to use Raiden. That's a good call. So uh, Fitz does have access to more Illuminas than Magre via his Coliseum visit as he is showing off with his lock and double proc. Oh my goodness. Uh, is he going to do a Spinner on tier 1? He can get away with that because remember he has Spinner, Phantom, and Golem. All three Espers that you want to yep. see in this fight. Uh, Realm Terra. Realm Terra. I might save it for tier 2. Just uh, to avoid 10 hits. Which doesn't do a bunch of damage, but it just it just takes a while. Even if you're blocking everything. 
But looks like they're going to use it to uh, cut down on the counterattacks. More procs. Just great RNG so far for Fitz. Meanwhile, Magre getting hit with that uh, R polarity. Going to have to waste a turn moving everybody back into the right row. There's an argue to, argument to be made with the tremendous defense that they've all found. Uh, maybe you don't even have to do that because you can just fire off your fender around this tier. And, uh... Honestly, yeah. Yeah, Setzer at least uh, with the snow muffler is only going to be taking like two or three damage per hit. Tier one down for Fitz at 107.06. Magre working his way through tier one. Uh, Turnsman, can you explain tier two to me a little bit? What's going on here? Why are there so many pieces, and what did they do? Well, uh, <laughs> this is this is the complicated one. Um, not necessarily each individual bit, but so there are four targets. Uh, that, that tiger the, looks scary. What does he do? Well, that tiger is scary. Uh, he does a couple of minor, you know, he's got flare star. He's got a couple of little smaller um, enemy skill style moves, but he will also use Zombite after, I want to say four turns, five turns, something like that, mm -hmm. uh, which you don't want to happen ever, especially not if you've got a fixed dice offering Setzer in your party. Yes, indeed. Uh, Zombie is a very nasty status effect that is essentially confusion and like a weird undead effect where you can't use Phoenix Downs, you got to use a special thing. Uh, so you want to take out Tiger Face first. Um, there is also a uh, part, that weird pile of stuff in the middle there, right next to the lady with the ribbon. Mm -hmm. uh, that is tools. Uh, you can take that out with a uh, any kind of instant death, so Odin or Raiden in this case. And then the uh, the other two, the the fella in front uh, with the underwear, that's hit. Uh, mm -hmm. He hits exactly what it says on the tin. And the dude in the back, that is magic. He casts magic, also pretty self-explanatory. However, magic is weak to mute for some reason. So if you have mute, you definitely want to use that on him in the back right away. And then he just, he becomes a completely vestigial, like will not do anything until his death counter at the very end. Very well put. Uh, Fitz has worked his way through Tiger Face. Tiger Face is down. He's making his way through uh, tools now. Ooh, Flare Star out on Magre stride of the screen. Who's still a little bit behind uh, by Fitz. Tier, tier 2 is going a little bit faster for Fitz than is Magre, but Magre still about the same gap they started. About 29, 30 a second so, between the two runners. A uh, quick correction, correction from chat. It's Doom Tusk. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, it does have the same effect, so it's but yes, Doom Tusk is the uh, the move that Tiger Face uses. I would I would imagine I wouldn't be surprised if it had like a different accuracy rating or something from Zombite, but still a physical attack that uh, set Zombie. Not what you want to see. Uh, ten hits came out on Fitzred, so he's working his way through his. Oh, a desperation Woo! attack from Terra. You don't see that every day. Riot Blade. Beautiful. Uh, Fitz almost done with his tier 2. Magre still cooking, putting the ingredients together, getting the oven ready before he starts baking his tier 2 and getting it going. So it does look like Magre, Magre does have a bit more offense. Like most of his characters are doing roughly, you know, 1,000 to 1,500 damage more than Fitz's side uh, with comp comparable attacks. That Bolt 3 on Realm is, is doing a lot of work uh, in this fight. And that lock, I mean, look at that. Yeah, I've Look at seen that. I've seen Fitz's uh, Zetzer throw out his fixed dice offering, which is just gonna be a little bit of a time sink with the better options available. So that's one mm -hmm. way Magre, a little behind, could catch up the timer here. Uh, Fitz on his way to tier three. Magre still getting his tier two cake in the oven, getting the last pieces together, putting the icing on top. Out yeah, comes. despite having a little bit less offense. Uh, one free fits is is playing really cleanly through this final fight. Uh, out comes Merton. Doesn't do too much to uh, stall fits here. A little time sink in this uh, Pearl One animation, and out comes Zetzer again. So tier three, a um, little build, a little different order of operations than tier one and tier two. Uh, we want to kill the back part first, who fortunately only has 9,999 HP. But if we don't kill that part first, they will cast life two on the front part if we kill that, which happens to have 40,000 HP on the dot. 
Ooh. Oh no, not a pearl. Also, uh, that back part absorbs everything. Yeah, so you absorbs another all another time of when the elements. Uh, Magray done with tier two. Uh, he's coming on up and he's saying, "Fitz, let's uh, ride this elevator together. Let's see if we can get out first. Yeah, it's getting closer. Uh, pearl out. So unfortunately, the front part, which we like to call sleep, uh, it does not absorb all of the elements. Uh, back part down for Fitz. We heard the crack pal. Here comes some. Here comes some Zetter action. Uh, fortunately, Magre got a proc with his lock, and that's getting absorbed. And I believe Fitz uh, fired off Golem earlier, mm -hmm. so no, doesn't have to worry too much about accidentally doing way too much damage with Setzer. Yeah, uh, we're in the fourth quarter of uh, tier three with uh, Fitz's screen because out comes Medio, out comes Calmness. Fourth quarter done. Boom! Sound the horn. We got one tier left. All right, so we have a date love with to see Destiny. A block date the, with Destiny for Fitz. Uh, Magre, a little, yep. a little more cooking to do before we get that same date. Climbing up to the top of the tower here. Yeah, this is, uh, again, still a pretty close race, about 30 seconds apart. Uh, out comes Merton. So Magre is still not quite in the fourth quarter of his fight. He's still lingering in the third quarter a little bit. Tier 4 has landed, and Fitz's Tier 4 is underway. Uh, what's Fitz looking to do here on uh, Tier 4, uh, Terzman? Well, uh, step one is to do as much damage as you possibly can right out of the gate. Uh, see if you can't avoid Fallen 1, which is a really obnoxious move that brings everybody down to 1 HP. Um, I believe you can skip it if you manage to pump out, I want to say it's 30,000 damage. Yes, indeed. Uh, in the first turn, which honestly both of our runners are perfectly capable of doing uh, with their setups at this point. Uh, I think Locke is out of MP because he did I saw MP. that, yeah. Maybe he's out of MP, and Fitz is realizing that he's going to give him a little MP boost. A little bit of a roadblock. Tier 4 has been ordered from Uber Eats by Magre. The driver has picked it up. He is on his way. He is at the doorstep. He is ready to drop it off and confirm the Locke. delivery. Locke is going to have a quick little ether frolic before he starts swinging again. Yeah, so out came following one for uh, on Fitz's screen, which reduces everybody's HP to one. A little bit of recovery here for Fitz to get back up and going. Thankfully, a lot of Cure 3 floating around in this seed, so uh, pretty easy to get, get back up and running without having to burn in a Mega Elixir. Ooh, right. and here's the other bad part. Uh, yep. yep. I'll, let, I'll let you get into the, the wonderful world of Kefka's counterattacks. Okay, here, here's the quick version of what you want to do in this phase on Fitz's screen, is when he throws his face in your face, you just want to attack him with everything you got. Because he has a lot of nasty counterattacks he can fire off when he is in the later half of his fight. But at this exact point in time on Fitz's screen, no counterattacks come, can come out, so you just want to fire away. Um, because when he is done with this little charge up, with his little vibrations and jiving, out comes Goner. And Goner is a non-elemental attack, which isn't going to give Fitz too much trouble because it doesn't pierce magic defense. And you can see his Terra has Shell from a Force Shield, so he's in no danger of wiping to this spell. But we do kind of want to slow down here because now we can get some nasty counterattacks, including Ultima, based on how much damage we have done. Yeah, I think Ultima starts showing up. Oh, oh while crack we were pal. talking, Magre zips GD. right past him. Oh my goodness. What a... Wow. Wow, Magre grabbed that order that was delivered to him Gee, and he devoured geez. it fast. Goodness gracious. You know what it was? It was, I'm sure Magre got past the, the Fallen One. You know, they were doing a lot more damage with their lock. Uh, maybe got a little bit lucky with some of the sets or rolls, but just creamed Absolutely that clown. Amazing. One. Didn't even finish dissolving before One Free Fits also takes out Kefka. Yeah. GG's to both of these runners. That was incredible. Indeed. What what an amazing catch up. 114.57 is Magre's timer on his on his screen. 115.27 for Fitz. What an amazing finish. Fitz had it. You know, he, he was working his way to through four, but Magre got there and uh, he wasted no time with his date just with Destiny. Yeah, he just managed to get managed to save his boost for right at the end of the race. Uh zipped ahead of one free fits at quite literally the last possible minute uh, i given... guess i guess what happened was is maybe fitz got hit by a blue shell and we just didn't see it mm. 
That, that happens sometimes in the end of some of the close races. Those things get around. They're not even in this game, and every now and then they'll show up and blast the leader. <laughs> yeah, so again, 114.57, uh, 115.27 uh, for one pre fits. What an amazing race. Yeah, that was great. A lot of, a lot, it, it, I guess, strong fundamentals maybe would be the, the best way to put it. You know, like, like we mentioned at the top, both of these runners have been doing this for a very long time. They know what they're doing. And it was really great to see um, the slight divergence that they had. They were both doing some of the same stuff early on, but mm -hmm. you could tell that, you know, it, you could tell that there was some expressiveness there. Like Magre went straight for uh, the sealed gate. Uh, One Free Fits did a little bit of the the normal beginning looting. And both of those both of those methods were good. Like One Free Fits ended up with a ton of great armor out of the gate and a bunch of stuff to sell. Uh, whereas Magre got, you know, got a whole check out of the way, knew right away that they had lock uh, out of the start. Yes, indeed. All right, so with that finish in mind, let's refresh a little bit. Let's look at the previous standings currently going on in the Chupon Championship. As you can see, we had Kefka won the fall spell. Magre representing Kefka won the fall spell. His teammate Double Down had a 119-19. Uh, Fits and Grits featuring one free Fits and Honeydew. Honeydew posted the 120.07. Let's take a look at the post-race standings now with those two times calculated in. And look at that. Kefka won the walls fell. 234.16. What an amazing time between two amazing runners. Uh, Fits and Grits at 235.34. Uh, just a little bit of a minute and change between the two. What what an amazing shakeup there. Yeah, really incredible. Uh sliding right right in at uh at, in third place there yeah, yeah i remember so, double down early in the chat was uh talking about talking about ma gray carrying that team but hey 119 19 that is nothing to sneeze at there yeah not at not at all uh but nevertheless uh, a couple of other runners still to go so we'll see how this rest of this round shakes out uh if you'd like to join the Chupon championship you still can you got until tuesday before uh, we we advance um, details in the race room, but with that, Turdsman, I want to thank you for uh, joining me tonight. I also want to give a special shout out to Dub Ward. He was doing the tracking for us tonight. Dub Ward, uh, don't appreciate can't, words can't say how much I appreciate you, my dog. Thank you for uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, absolutely, and a, a big thanks to uh, you know the World's Collide community at large. Uh, thank you to everybody who keeps keeps all the keeps all the gears moving. There's there's a lot of people coming in. Uh, these days the past few months i uh, really appreciate having having all the fresh fresh talent coming in it's been really fun watching them uh watching them them grow really quickly uh and i guess also big thanks to you uh drinks glue for joining me in the booth and for keeping the uh keep keeping the lights on in the background there uh, it's my pleasure and uh thank you everybody for tuning in and with that Terzman, do you have anything else that you like to say before we uh before we bow out Got to pet that dog, man. Oh, yeah. Get that dog in you, as Magre had tonight. I think I'm good otherwise, though. All right. Everybody have a good night. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night, y'all.